tuned, and the air is heavy and humid. Until now, the enemy has held sway here. Thirty miles north of the little town of Darkto, the airborne engineers erect a crude bridge. A few miles beyond lies an American Special Forces camp. It has been under siege by the Viet Cong for nearly a week. Supplies and ammunition are badly needed, and relief troops must get through. The first of the trucks begins crossing. Near the bridge, the men of B Battery 320th Artillery prepare for another firing mission. Throughout the morning, they have rained howitzer shells upon the enemy forces attacking the camp. Now, with fresh supplies of ammunition, they're ready to begin again. Each time the shelling starts, the enemy withdraws his attacking forces to escape the punishing fires. When it is lifted, he regroups and again tries to take the camp. Despite week-long airstrikes by U.S. Air Force jets, the Viet Cong have shown no signs of withdrawing. But the artillery fire, directed by those defending the outpost, is having a telling effect. eagles are under fire. The enemy has come to silence the guns. Communist fire comes from everywhere. Out there, the enemy is creeping in. He will try to overrun the American positions. The waiting is agony. Then the enemy makes his move. This is it. Live or die. In the forefront, General Pearson, the boss here in hell. From Bastogne to Vietnam, the tradition remains unbroken, magnificent, the screaming eagle. The battle wanes. A small part of Operation Hawthorne is over. Some of the men of the 101st will fight no more. But for this day, the bastions of freedom held. They came from the north, a full battalion. Their weapons, not ours, have been silenced. Throughout the oppressive days and nights of June 1966, Operation Hawthorne continues. In the violent conflict which rages in Kantum province, the Screaming Eagles repeatedly beat back prize troop units of the North Vietnamese Army. In 16 straight days of combat, the brigade envelops the 24th North Vietnamese Army Regiment, and more than 500 of the communist aggressors are killed. It is the largest single battle of the war for the men of the 101st. The bitter struggle to preserve the freedom of this little Asian nation is made more bearable as each man is enriched in spirit 
and strengthened in his resolve. At last, the fighting is done. gallant screaming eagles and the battles of Operation Hawthorne. In recognition of their outstanding victory in Khan Thum province, the premier of South Vietnam, Nguyen Cao Ki, comes to the little town of Dak Tho. Premier Ki and the deputy premier express the gratitude of their nation in a way that fighting men can understand. These are some of the weapons taken from the enemy, the Premier is told. In the hands of the Communists, the arms of China, Poland, Czechoslovakia, Russia, and even a variety of United States, French, and British weapons, which had fallen into those same enemy hands. Living evidence of the North Vietnamese regular army, six out of the 22 taken alive by the Screaming Eagles. Premier Key confronts the aggressors. You are lucky the Americans have taken you, he smiled. On the 21st of July, following surveillance operations along the Laotian and Cambodian borders, the brigade returns to Tui Hua. A new operation labeled John Paul Jones gets underway. Its purpose is to open and secure a 16-mile stretch of National Highway 1 between Tui Hua and Vung Ro Bay on the coast. The accomplishment of this mission will speed up logistic support of the Tui Hua area by permitting ships to unload at the nearby bay. It begins with elements of the 502nd Infantry landing at the cliff-guarded Vung Ro Bay, where, without encountering resistance, they begin moving inland to link up with the oncoming units of the 327th. The inland forces push forward, securing the highway and sweeping the adjoining countryside. Supported by helicopter gunships, Helleborn assault troops clean out the operational zone within six weeks. By early September 1966, they have secured Vung Ro Bay and Highway 1 north to Tui Hua. Sweeping through the mountains, the brigade captures 40 North Vietnamese and Viet Cong and kills 209 others. While Operation John Paul Jones is still in progress, the engineers begin construction work on the connecting highway between Vung Ro Bay and Highway 1. The Screaming Eagles have done their job well, and a new seaport is born. In the weeks which follow, the brigade protects the rice farmers as they harvest some 17,000 metric tons of the precious grain. Once again, the Tui Hua sector becomes a battlefield, and the Viet Cong suffer heavy losses with 239 killed and 42 captured. Viet Cong have had enough. They are nowhere to be found. Eleven Vietnamese are found, however, in a Viet Cong prison camp. They have apparently received no medical attention while in the hands of the communists. 
held by the Viet Cong for several months, their ailments range from open sores and skin infections to malnutrition. as well as deformities caused by unset broken bones. This man, a former Viet Cong who defected to the Republic and was later captured by the VC, cannot tell of his unspeakable nightmare with the enemy. On the 9th of December, the odyssey of the brigade continues. From Tui Hua, back up north to Kantum province. The Viet Cong have been cleared from Fuyen province by this time and the Screaming Eagles are moved to the north in a record 48 hours by the U.S. Air Force. The deployment of the brigade by means of parachute marks the first jump in more than a year for many of the men. But they're in superb physical condition, and the jump goes well. As 1966 draws to a close, the brigade descends upon Kantum province to take part in Operation Picket. Fighting side by side with Vietnamese army forces and militia, the men of the 101st once again will scour the countryside, finding and finishing the enemy. The operations in Kantum province continue until the 21st of January, 1967. Then, after more than a year's absence from their home base at Van Rang, the brigade is ordered back for a rest. It seems a long time since the LSTs first moved the brigade up to Quignon as they headed for their first combat around Anke. Now, the LSTs are taking them home. On the 26th, the last convoy rolls into camp at Van Rang. Brigadier General Willard Pearson welcomes the men home. It will be one of his last official acts as brigade commander. Two days later, General Pearson transfers command of the 1st Brigade, 101st Airborne Division to the new brigade commander, Brigadier General S.H. Matheson. The battle-hardened troops watch with solemn pride as Lieutenant General Engler pins the Legion of Merit on the uniform of their departing commander. So the Screaming Eagles bid farewell to the commander who led them in 14 combat operations from one end of Vietnam to the other. For the Screaming Eagles, as for the rest of the United States military forces in Vietnam, the valiant effort to keep that young nation free continues. However far removed from our shores, the conflict between those who cherish human dignity and those who would snuff it out affects us all. In this belief, the gallant men of the United States Army stand steadfast, not only in Southeast Asia, but wherever they may be asked to serve in freedom's cause.